Hi, this is Evan Nielsen from Nielsen Law Group and our topic for this segment is which business entity should you choose in order to get the best tax benefit? The question usually revolves around what kind of entity to form and the truth is that a more important question is what election should that entity choose? So let's start with the type of business entity and then we'll talk about the business elections. There are lots of entity types that you can choose from that range from a sole proprietorship and a partnership to an LLC or a corporation. And in some cases, a professional corporation is discussed as well. But when you review all of those things and look at the various options, usually if you want the benefit of a business return and a business entity for your tax strategy, you'll want to form <clears throat> something along the lines of a simple LLC then you'll make the appropriate tax election. Now to understand the difference between the entity and the election, think about how it works with an individual. An individual who files their taxes can make a filing election depending on their particular status. So if I'm single, not married, have no dependents, then I would choose to file my tax return as single. Now if I'm married, then I would file married filing either jointly or separately. Either status would apply. If I'm not married but I have dependents then I could be a head of household or I might also be a qualified widow or widower. All of those are various tax filing statuses that I would have as an individual. So the same thing applies if I'm a business entity. I can make various elections. And the reason that I mentioned that an LLC is probably the best option is because you have the most election options when you're a, an LLC. So let's take a look at the various options. <clears throat> as a, an LLC, I can elect to be taxed as a partnership. So long as there's at least two owners of the business entity, then that's an election that's possible. And by the way, husband and wife that own an LLC can be treated as separate entities and therefore a partnership for tax purposes. So that's one possible option. Another option would be to make what's called the S election. That means that I'm choosing to be taxed under the provisions of subchapter S of the tax code. And there are some reasons why I might choose that as well. These are the most common and so let's take a little more detailed look at those. A partnership is a business entity for tax purposes that files a business return, but it doesn't pay any tax. It simply reports whatever information on the business return applies to each partner on a K-1 to each partner. And then the partners put the tax information on their personal return and that's where the tax is paid if there's any that's going to be applicable in the situation. So. Essentially, a partnership is what's referred to as a pass-through entity. It doesn't pay tax, it just passes tax information through to the individual owners. But significantly, it files its own business return and it's, it's governed by the rules of business tax preparation, which is important for your tax strategy because you have a lot of options when it comes to business strategy on your taxes that you don't have when you're filing the same information on your personal return. Now let's take a look at an S election or what's sometimes referred to as an S corporation. When you elect to be taxed under subchapter S of the tax code, that means that you are choosing again to be a pass-through entity. So the corporation, the LLC in this case, would make the S election and then would prepare its taxes show income minus expenses and profits or losses but then not pay tax on them simply pass through to the owner or owners of the individual corporation the information that was applicable to them for their percent of ownership. Now an S corporation or an entity making the S election can choose to have one owner a hundred percent owner and that individual could then get the same benefits that a multi-member LLC could from a partnership. So that may be one reason that you choose the S election is if there's only one owner. Something else that is significant is that if it's a partnership 
any income that's generated by the partnership, any ordinary income, is subject to self-employment taxes as well as ordinary income taxes. So after the expenses are all deducted, if there is a profit that's shown in the business entity, then it will be treated on your personal return as self-employment income and you'll pay that tax and then also pay any income tax that would apply. But an S corporation or an entity that's made the S election is treated differently. You have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. That salary would be obviously subject to the self-employment taxes or the equivalent of them. But then any other profits would only be subject to income taxes, not self-employment taxes. And so for that reason, if you're expecting to generate a profit in your business entity, you may choose to go with the S election instead of a partnership election. And there may be some tax benefits to you for doing so. And it's not uncommon just simply by changing the election for someone to be able to save themselves thousands of dollars in self-employment taxes by doing that. Now just a brief comment about C corporations before we wrap this up. A C corporation is as you might expect, just a corporation that has elected to be taxed under subchapter C of the tax code. And a corporation under subchapter C is treated as a separate entity that pays tax. And so that means income minus expenses for the corporation. If it leaves a profit, the corporation will pay tax, then distribute what's left over after taxes are paid to its owner, who pays taxes again, so that's double taxation. And you might wonder why in the world would someone ever want to do that? Well, if the business entity has a large number of owners or a substantial num amount of income and assets, then the requirement is that you have to be a C corporation. So above a certain level, you don't get a choice. But most of us would still not choose that option and wouldn't be required to until we reach 500 million in revenue or 500 owners, for example. But if we are expecting multiple years of losses, then one of the things that a C corporation is entitled to do is save or bank those losses, if you will, so that each year as the losses accumulate, they can then be saved until such time as the profits start to generate and that then can be used to offset those profits. So this is something that's regularly used when it's a development of some kind that will take many years to create and a lot of money and then eventually there's profits that are expected. So there may be specific situations where a C corporation is the best solution for you. Now, which option you go with, which type of entity, and more importantly, which type of tax election you make, really is a function of the specific circumstances that you're dealing with. So, the best thing to do is to look at your circumstances, review the options, and then probably get with your tax professional to review them and make a determination. Well, this has been helpful to give you a little bit of a sense of which entity and which elections make good sense in your specific case. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We would love to visit with you. Our number is 480-888-7111. Thank you. Have a great day.